all right doing a little video on uh one of our rigs that we use this one we use every day all right so we do a little bit uh more than just pressure washing so there's some stuff in here that you all may not need or use but that we have to use or whatever all right so just starting out we have on the right hand side the custom um hose reel stand that i that i built and welded as best i could um so i have two hanny 12 inch reels there's about 250 feet of hose on each one on the top i have a three quarter inch uh water hose from northern tool um that's actually the first water hose I've ever bought new. Believe it or not, I'm a big believer of getting things used. So I've usually gotten water hoses for free or I would buy some equipment and the hoses came with it. Like most of these hoses, these high pressure hoses are used. I didn't buy, I think I only bought 100 feet. No, I bought 150 feet of these hoses. The rest was, was new, I bought 150 feet new rest of it was used and actually one of the 50 foot sections I just got like like, like two weeks ago so I, I'm a big proponent of, of buying used stuff whenever I can all right these reels were used that top reel was new though so I couldn't find one used so that's a uh, general pump 18 inch reel right now it's got 200 feet of uh, three-quarter hose like I said before all right I got my battery here that I use to power my reels um, I'm running like 10 gauge or something 10 gauge car amp um, wire on these reels alright we do a, we have a lot of stops and it's 100 degrees in the summer 105 so manually pulling in high pressure reels is a no no now for the water hose manual reel you can get by with it because the, um, the you know the hose is a little bit you know easier to work with when you're pulling it in plus it's up top so you can you know what i'm saying you're standing up and you're pulling it in whereas with, with the high pressure it's not gonna happen right here i have my harbor freight battery charger i'm charging up my um, battery for my reel all right on this side something I'm really proud of I had an idea that I wanted my engine stacked so I put my uh, 8 gallon a minute machine on the floor and my old trusty 4 gallon a minute machine this is the first machine I bought bought it from a guy for $280 this machine was already like 12 years old when I bought it and I've ran it for 3 years for long hours um great machine not a fan of the pull start though but it's still a great solid machine and we use both of these machines on a daily basis together we're like two, 12 and a half gallons a minute um so we definitely have to make sure we have enough water so um if you ever thought about stacking your machine and having to worry about if it'll pull it will pull as you can see I wanted to make sure that when my engine stacked, I could still service my GX690 if I needed to clean my car, replace my oil filter, um, you know, adjust the car, you know, any little like easy maintenance things or whatever I needed to do. I wanted to make sure that I had enough clearance. So I believe that this is like 20 from here to there. I want to say it's maybe 23 inches so you add from here to where that hose is at that's about another seven or eight inches so you're talking about what 31 inches i'm pulling water 31 inches in the air you can do it all right you just have to make sure that you know you don't have any leaks especially if you're in a box truck or a trailer you do not want leaks so you got to make sure everything is tight of course you're gonna have leaks every now and then or whatever but if you're trying to pull water up 
you got to make sure that a you have a bell drive both of my machines are bell drives i have other rigs everything is bell drive um i see a lot of new guys getting gear drives and they and you know having issues trying to get the thing to pull water whatever i don't use gear drives never had one will never buy one i started off with a uh, bell drive that's the only thing i use all right uh, i want to make sure like i said before when i have my machine stacked up like this it's for two reasons a i want to be able to walk in this trailer i want to i mean in, in this box i want to maximize my room you know what I'm saying i want to save space also when you're working on an engine if the engine goes down the last thing you want to do is be hunched over as it is i already got one machine on the floor i don't want to you know what i'm saying i want to make things as easy as, as, as they can be also one machine goes down or whatever all we do is pop quick connects from there to there and we, 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 we can rock and roll we don't have to worry about moving the machine over and all that so um I would guess this machine is like 14, 15 years old. It's a 340 max. It's not a 390, it's a 340 max. I think this machine, yeah, I want to say 14 years old or something. If I had to guess, this machine probably has six, 7,000 hours on it. Doesn't burn oil, starts right up. It's a great machine. All right. Um, up here, I got one paper towel holder. I need to put another one. Put another one right there. Whatever. Here, right here, this is my dumb valve. Okay. Dump valve, one and a half inch. It's incredible. Let's see. Watch this. <laughs> Dump the water fast. All right, so we got the one and a half inch dump valve. We take that off whenever we need to uh, close the door. There's a shovel on the side. Like I said, we have to do other work that, you know, is outside of pressure washing. So, ear protection. If you have a, a trailer, enclosed trailer or box truck, you must have ear protection. When both of these machines are running inside this box, it's extremely loud. You know what I'm saying? You will damage your hearing walking in here for an extended amount of time without this ear protection on. So that's, that's one thing I, I make sure I have. I have one here and I got an extra one back there. All right, I got an extra long wand hanging up just in case. Let's go on in. Um, I have two inline filters right there. So the way I have mine is plumbed. I have two 330-gallon IBC totes coming down. I have uh, two-inch uh, couplers coming out of the IBC tote, which are right there. From there, there's a reducer to go from two-inch to one-and-a-half, all right, on both sides. Typically, we ride around with a, with both of these about half full, which is about 300 gallons. Right now, we're running low because we had a long day, but usually I run about 300 gallons in here. It's easier. Once these machines get going, if you're low on water, it's, it takes too long to get back up. So we try to stay between 300 to 400 gallons when, we, when we're driving around. We want to pull up. We want to start the key and start working. We don't want to wait to fill these tanks. Cause that's time wasted you know what i'm saying so coming out of these we got a four-way one and a half inch that comes down and turns and this right here is my dub valve that goes all the way out i kind of didn't think this through i probably should have got the three-way splitter and went this way to my dub valve and whatever but it is what it is Okay. So back here we got this PVC here with the ball valve comes around the corner and it splits off into here, which gives me two one inch. So I go from a one and a half to, and I split to a two one inch um, to the holes, which feeds my machines. All right. 
just so you know you all can see. I can't tell. Right? There's water right at the at the top. These things hold water. They stay primed at all times. I never have to worry about that. Um, here I have my bypass for this machine. It has a bypass for the eight gallon right here that goes down and one goes in the one tank, one goes in the other tank. We got a trash can for trash. Uh, in this in this rig, we don't do any soft washing in this rig. We have another rig for that that has whatever. So this rig has an 80 gallon chem tank that we haven't I haven't plumbed up yet because I, ha I just haven't needed it. I haven't really had time. I haven't really needed to do any soft washing on this rig. So if and when I do, I have another pump already in real and everything. And I'll do that later. Um, if I was to do a soft wash rig in here, I would just add a seven gallon fat boy, which I already have. And then I would, I would, I would build a stand from the ground up and I would put my tank, I'm, I'm sorry, I would put my reel by right here on top of my tank, electric reel, and then pull it in that way. Um, we got an organizer, parts, you know, ball valves, quick connects, O-rings, glue, uh, gauge, nozzles, you know, regular stuff, cooler, and then we got the toolbox with, um, you know, tons of screwdrivers, hammer, um, there's a, there's a drill in there, bits, sockets, you know, everything we need to, to keep, to keep going, keep everything fixed. Um, that's pretty much it though. This is more of a um, commercial rig, so that's why it's, it's it's built the way it's built. That's a 36 inch uh, service cleaner up there that we don't really use that much. Whenever we do uh, surface clean, a lot of surface cleaning, we do that with the other rig. This is just this is a totally different rig that's purpose built for this. Two five gallon gas cans I've got; those were free. <clears throat> that was free. This is a, a, a five gallon. I think this is a five gallon that goes to the uh, eight gallon machine. Another thing I love about these four gallons when they're good on gas, you can go a couple hours on the tank of gas. I love that. I think that's pretty much it, though. It's a real simple, you know, rig. It already the lights were already in it. Great for night work. Keeps everything lit. Um, I think that's really much. That's really it. Man. If y'all have any questions or whatever, or you know, just let me know. All right. I'll see y'all on the next one.